guess. Um, so in 1955, Post Pius XII um, established the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker to counter the Communists of May Day. Um, and so it was established as a feast, actually. And still in the, um, in the Tridentine here, um, we have this in the old calendar, it's still, okay, this is a feast. It actually takes precedence over the Sunday, uh, the third Sunday of Easter. Um, so, <coughs> a couple things we should just consider and give a short homily. St. Joseph the Worker. First of all, the greatest male saint, the father of the God-man that the Son of God chose to have as his father here on earth that he created as a poor carpenter. His name is Saint Joseph. He's one that we can learn so much from, even though in the Bible, in the Gospels, we have not one word recorded of his. He's silent. As any good husband father is gonna do, he's gonna put his wife out in front, he's gonna put his son out, I mean, of course, the God man out in front, but this, this is just what we see in the virtue of a, of a, of a, of a true husband and true father. Um, but he's, he's, he's a worker, and work is good for us. It's not a punishment as a result of original sin. Work was given to Adam and Eve before the original sin, to tend the garden. He only became laborious and hard after the original sin. But it's still something that is good for all of us, because as St. John Paul says, we actually use our own gifts and talents in, in our Lord's own creation. Um, for his yet greater honor and glory, and he gives very gift, various gifts to various individuals. And so when we, we think of that carpenter shop in, in Nazareth, this is where our Lord, we can see Jesus has three, there are three types of knowledge in, in our Lord. I remember Father Hardin talking to us about this. So first of all, beatific vision in his human mind. Secondly, his infused knowledge as Adam would have had that he lost. And then finally, experiential knowledge. And this is the only way that we can say that Jesus Christ could learn, okay? Because he can't learn any way else, he's God. But he's never pounded a nail, okay, as God. He's never planed a board as God, God's pure spirit. So we say he learns, he's taught by Joseph how to do these things, the art of carpentry. And so what are some of the virtues that stand out for us in this carpenter shop that we see with, with Joseph and with our Lord? Um, well, first, <clears throat> when it comes to the type of work that Joseph is engaged in. Um, it's, you know, what's he doing? What, you, you talk about punctuality, you talk about diligence, um, you talk about patience, okay? Um, you have to be a little bit creative too when you're, when you're working with wood as far as solving different problems. Carpenters do this all the time, construction guys. But there's a creativity that has to be there. Um, and then you see his, his virtue when it comes to working with others. Um, here's a man who, he's the just man. Others, other men would have wanted to talk to him, to learn from him. So how did he interact with these other men? He's trying to get his work done, but yet he's gonna be patient, he's gonna be cheerful, he's gonna be optimistic. He's just and, and honest, but he's also, he's not rude. He's not going to make someone feel as if they think that you know they're interrupting him in some way. That's the virtue of Joseph. He's this humble gentleman, this strong gentleman that our Lord chose to be his foster father. So he doesn't have to say anything. He's strong in who he is. Okay, doesn't have to prove to anybody. That's who he is. That's just who he is. Okay. No, he's 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 content to be silent and to do his work um, and to have that, that daily interaction with our Lord and with Our Lady. Um, just a couple of quotes that are very good for us, I think. Blessed William Joseph Chaminade. Um, if you've ever done the Novena of St. Joseph, it's in Father Calloway's book. He says this. Um, it's a little bit broader 
um, consideration of Joseph. To give life to someone is the greatest of all gifts. To save a life is the next. Who gave life to Jesus? It was Mary. Who saved his life? It was Joseph. Ask St. Paul who persecuted him. St. Peter denied him. Ask all the saints who put him to death. But if we ask who saved his life, be silent, patriarchs. Be silent, prophets. Be silent, apostles, confessors, and martyrs. Let St. Joseph speak, for this honor is his alone. He alone is the Savior of the Savior. And finally, quote from St. Jose Maria. Love St. Joseph a lot. Love him with all our soul, because he, together with Jesus, is the person who has most loved our Blessed Lady and has been closest to God. He is the person who has most loved God after our mother. He deserves your affection. It will do you good to get to know him because he is the master of the interior life and has great power before the Lord and before the mother of God. May Almighty God bless you to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Amen.